I'm here at the NEC Classic Car Show on the Lancaster Pride of Ownership stand with Fabian Steele, who's got a rather special Lotus Esprit Turbo. What's the story behind it? Well, I saw the movie The Spy Loved Me when I was 10 years old, and ever since then I've wanted the white Spy Who Loved Me car. And then about eight years ago, an opportunity came to buy one that was in bits, and I thought, well, I'm not getting any younger, so I bit the bullet, got the money together and bought the car, and then I decided to make an exact replica of the uh, Spy Lobby car, down to the last detail. And that car at the moment is parked over the other side of the building under the Practical Classic stand. So that's a Series 1? That's a play. Series 1, the one that goes underwater in the movie. Okay. This car, I, after I built that one, I got a little bit bored and then I came up with the idea of building the Fiore's only car, which is this one you see before you here. Uh, it's a bit iconic because it has skis, no other car's got skis like this on the back. This car is an identical replica to the movie car. Every detail of the car is identical, including the paint, the interior trim, the carpets, the ski racks, and every other detail. So you've, you've made little brackets and things like that? Yes, I've right. made these ski racks. Okay, and, and how have you got it right? How do you know that you're right? Well, originally Lotus made the ski racks for the movie and they were made from balsa wood and they weren't designed to be real ski racks. So they're only designed to last for minutes. And in fact, in the movie, they screwed these skis to the tailgate and it, you only see it for about two minutes on that particular scene. Anyway, uh, the one in my Ami, the ski racks are actually broken because the, the wood and the fillers come apart. So I went there and I photographed them. I made, took all the measurements and then I came back and I devised a way of making them and originally I made a styrofoam model of each of them and from that made a fiberglass mould. Uh, the first time I went there I tried to build these racks on the top that you see here but I found that my styrofoam model just didn't look right, it wouldn't sit correctly on the roof of the car. So I decided to go back to Miami on the second trip and as soon as I saw the car I realised what I'd done wrong. Everybody who's tried to replicate these ski racks up to now has made them symmetrical. And of course they're not, because if you look carefully, the roof is curved like that. Yeah. So the, ra the racks are shorter on the inside edge, so that the skis are horizontal. And once I saw that, the rest was pretty straightforward, just a lot of effort. But then I had to design a mechanism that worked as a real ski rack. So these fiberglass sections don't take any load. The load's taken by a steel section underneath. And then there are four five millimeter bolts welded into a steel structure and they're bolted through the tailgate. On the Lotus this tailgate is hollow so it's never designed to take the load of the skis because you can imagine if I'm going 70 miles an hour the wind's lifting the skis from the front and trying to push them back trying to rip them off the and rear And do you car. drive the car with the skis in place? Yeah that, exactly that's the like plan. that. That's yeah. how it's yeah, exactly like that. So, with when you re so you did a complete restoration of the car? I did. Was this the biggest hurdle? Yes, it took two and a half years to get a working mechanism. And I had to strengthen this hollow tailgate by injecting structural foam into it to make it a lot stronger. And then the four bolts in each thing have load spreaders on the fiberglass underneath. And many people said at the start of this that you wouldn't be able to do the ski racks, they'll rip off at 30 miles an hour. So I just completely ignored that. And uh, I devised a steel section for the top, and then I took the car out, I went up to 30 miles an hour, didn't notice at all there were skis on the top. Went to 50 miles an hour, still no problem. Put my window down, heard a bit of wind noise. And then recently I made a movie at Dunsfold. And because it's a perimeter road and there's no traffic around, I decided to see how fast I could go with the skis. And I went over 80 miles an hour and they're still there. Undamaged. And then he stopped and realised they'd blown away. <laughs> no, fortunately they didn't. Okay, so um, you've got a blog. Well, so it's, on the, it's on the Lotus forums. Okay. I'm also on Facebook, Lotus Esprit Turbo Group, Lotus Esprit Group. And does that tell the story of the, of the rebuild? It does. Well, when I originally bought the white uh, S1 Esprit, I just bought bits. The chassis was done, the engine was done. I never saw the body, there were no doors, no windows, hundreds of boxes of components. And I've done classic cars before. I thought I'd just go and grab the Haynes manual and put the car back together. I started to search for Haynes manual, there isn't one for the Esprit. So then I thought, well, what do I do now? I've got no pictures of it, I never took it to pieces, how am I going to reassemble the car? So Lotus have a manual, but there's hardly any information and there's practically no pictures. So I thought, I'll have to join a forum 
I joined the Lotus forums. To dis my, my dismay, even though the car's 40 years old, there's hardly any information on the car or pictures. So I decided to change that. So every piece of research I did to reassemble the S1, the white car, is on that blog. Right. So that when people come to buy a car, if they try and restore it, they know how to do it from that blog. So what are we looking for online to find you? Sorry? What are we looking for online to find you? Where will we find that? If you look up the Lotus forums and Lotus fan, you'll find my, uh, my blog. Brilliant. So a bit of detail for most people. Uh, and if you're like a James Bond fan, you might want to look at the Bond Vivant channel on uh, YouTube. And there's a movie of the car, a bit of a spoof, but a lot more detail about why this is an authentic James Bond car and also the white car. Brilliant. OK. We need to just keep increasing that top speed to find out when the, <laughs> when the skis come off. Well, I think 80 is enough. <laughs> no, you're not even trying at 80. Let, let us know. OK. We'll OK. Do. And good luck with the uh, pride of ownership. Thank you. OK. Thank you.